Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Coral Springs, Florida at the Florida Panthers Ice Den. I'm your play-by-play, -play, Nicholas Cruz. You know, we had an incredible last match between College Hockey South Gray versus the ACC, a 5-4 thriller that is can only be summed up the start of an all-star game. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now playing here in the College Hockey South white team. Well, they'll play up against upstate New York, the collegiate hockey league. Now, for those who are just tuning in, you know, we had a lot of fun during nationals. Oh, oh someone just slipped next to me. He's okay. You know, we had a lot of fun during nationals. We, we were in the land of the Philly cheesesteak, and now we're in the land of some of the best Latin food you can find out here in South Florida. And as myself, that is a native here from Coral Springs, if you got comments, questions about Coral Springs or the Fort Lauderdale area, I'm your guy. I want to see your comments in the comment section below. If you got questions, what's your thoughts about the game? If you caught the last game, what's your thoughts? You know, we thought it was an absolutely incredible match. And we can only imagine the amazing game we're going to see here. In the meantime, we see some of the players from both sides warming up. And right in front of me is Siegel wearing the number one for upstate New York, a great goaltender. Definitely one of the goaltenders we're going to be looking at tonight. And we also want to go over some important players as well. We want to acknowledge, for first things first, of how well each player has come up here to play the All-Star game. We want to thank all the fans that have traveled here tonight. And for those who are watching us right here on College Hockey South, while we do have about nine minutes of warm-up, if this is your good chance to Go ahead and like and subscribe. This is where you can catch all the action here on College Hockey South on our website right here or, or our YouTube page. Like and subscribe. Don't forget, we got plenty of games. This is the last one for tonight, but tomorrow morning we hit it back bright and early. You know, as we get rid of these players, talk to each other, they met each other during nationals. Some of them are friends. You know, we looked at, we had a jersey unveiling, and I got to say, Upstate New York's jerseys are really nice in person. You got to love that all-star logo right in the front with the nice faded blue star coming in between their stripes there. So for Upstate, they'll be wearing their blue tarps, blue socks. And for college hockey white team, well, no brainer here. They'll be wearing their white tarps and their white socks in the bottom. Uh, as Jordan Luciano put it during the... AAU podcast, someone needed the Captain America shield. Where is the Captain America shield or the Captain America flag? Gotta love it. You know, we got all the great people here. We got Commissioner Kyle Neely from College Hockey South, who's been doing a great job getting this all together, along with Mark and Scott Solomon. All the hard work they put in for this and amazing referees as well. And this has been a great venue. This actually, where they're playing at right now, used to be where the Florida Panthers practice. So right behind me, I got the Roberto Lugano number one banner. We got Tori number 93, the, you know, the Southeast Division champions from the 2011 to beyond, the present trophy winner banners right behind me. This then I actually play here for the Panthers Warriors as well, which is a great program. And I gotta tell you, this rink, the ice itself is nice and soft. It's a little bit different compared to the last rink, which was the what they call here the mezzanine at the ice den. So back here in rink number three, which is the Panthers den. It is absolutely beautiful. It's clean, it's new. But like I mentioned, this used to be where the Florida Panthers used to practice, but now they got their new home at War Memorial. So they no longer use this facility as much, but they still got the Florida Panthers Junior Warriors locally. You got the Florida Alliance, another AAA team. And some of these players here in, in, in the College Hockey South, especially those who are, are from the South Florida region, played for those teams growing up. And, and as we take a look at how well these teams built each other up and what is going to be an incredibly fun game for both sides. So now I want to go over the point system because, hey, it's not an all-star game unless we have some fun, right, folks? I think we can all agree, all-star game, you want to have fun, right? If you want to have fun and you want to know about the point system, let me hear you in the chat. Post up a thumbs up and say, let me hear the point system of how it's going to work. We're here to have some fun. 
And let's let's do it. Give me one second. So yeah, if, here is the point system breakdown for you. So if you're winning each period, you get one point. All right, so everyone put up the number one if you're, if you're watching. One point if you're winning each period. You get three points if you're winning the game in regulation. So think about like in soccer, if you win a game, European soccer, you get three points. You get two points if you win the game in a shootout. You get one point losing the game in a shootout. You get one point winning the game by four or more goals, and you get an additional two points if you win in a shutout. There is no overtime. That's right, folks. So there's no overtime in this. We go straight into the shootout. You know, that's the cool, fun part of it. We want to make this a little bit more interesting and really exciting. So that is one of the key factors here. No overtime. Straight into the shootout. We want to get you at the edge of your seat, see how well these goalkeepers can play. Now, to my understanding, each goalkeeper will have the opportunity to play. They're going to do a each period, they'll swap out goalkeepers to make sure that each goalkeeper gets a chance to perform and play. Uh, of course, on the other rink, uh, someone asked a good question here, and that was from Marina. Were live videos from different arena? No, it was the same arena. It's uh, we're, we're under one rink, which is called the Florida Panthers Ice Den where we were filming on the other side, which was Mezzanine. We have three ice rinks over here. This is the, the biggest one on the far back side of the ice rink. The second one is Mezzanine, which is the more smaller side for capacity. And then we have Stadium in the first rink. So there's rink one, two, and three to answer your question for you. And a positive influence acts. What is the best tweet I can mail you all the way in upstate New York? Well, believe it or not, five minutes down the road from here, we have what has been rated the best takeout Indian food in the entire state of Florida. I'm not even kidding. Not even kidding. We have the best Indian food rated in the entire state of Florida. It's takeout. It's delicious. It's great. Highly recommend it. Eat there all the time. They have the best non bread you'll ever imagine. So thank you for your questions. And don't forget, make sure you like, subscribe. We're going to be here all evening for this incredible match between College Hockey South white team versus the upstate New York team. Now, I want to do a couple of quotes here just because the importance of why we put this tournament together, right? I'm sure a lot of you that are watching this, you got your kids that are watching this game, you're, you maybe you played before watching your you know, former college team play. This is a big moment for the kids, and it's a big moment for the parents and everyone else that watches hockey. So why do we do this? So I actually had a good chance to speak with Mark, Mark Perowitz is the CEO of the AAU, and he says, you know, when I ask him about, you know, what the thoughts on Nationals were, you know, we had an incredible Nationals, D3, the Canes win it, D2, University of Florida, so that's four, you know, two different teams from College Hockey South that have won it. And, you know, when I asked him, these, well, asked him you know, what, what was your thoughts about it? You know, it's like, you know, after five years, you know, because this was the fifth anniversary, we always want to kick it up a notch, you know, he loves to see the kids happy. You know, they want to have this festival environment, which I couldn't agree more of the importance of having that feeling, that emotion, and just how incredible it is to be here with these young young men out here giving everything they've got. And uh, we, we want to make sure that, you know, it's, it's imperative that we have that emotion, that feeling of camaraderie, we're here to have a good time, give it everything you got. You know, he also mentions that, you know, they're always thinking about ways they can make it bigger and better every year. What are, what are ways they can make it bigger and better every single year? You know, what, what, what can we do to make this even bigger? Well, All-Star is one of them. You know, this is, you know, one of the first All-Star tournaments here. They want to do something with a little bit more exciting, give a spin on things. And this is also a good way for the students to show up and, and like, you know, Executive Director Scott Salman said, it doesn't matter if the player's playing for D3 or D2, they can play with the D1 guys and beyond. This is for them, this is their moment to shine. You know, there's a lot of great players on both sides that I've seen during Nationals. You know, and this is for them, this is their moment to really build those memories, have fun. 
That's a key thing here. And, and as, once again, as the CEO, Mark Perwitz, also says, you know, it's about giving back to the community. He says it every time, every time there's a championship game, giving it back to the players, the seniors. This could be their last game. And this is the way they receive, giving it back, paying it forward. Such a good, positive message for these guys. And, you know, what's important for these players to spend time and show they can hang with the best of the best. And some of these players that I recognize from the Owls, we got Matias Weir. This could be a couple of last game he ever plays for FAU. You know, he's, he's a longtime player here from my university here. Uh, and rink one is where FAU plays at this rink. So there's a lot of, lot of different emotions you can put on this. And we, we want to make sure it's imperative that, you know, here we have fun. Don't forget now, now that we're going to get ready to step away from the national anthems and, and beyond. It's the College Hockey South White team taking on upstate New York. This match, well, it is nighttime. It's 9-14. You know what happens when it's nighttime? The stars have come out, and here they are shining bright right here on rank three at the den on here in Coral Springs, Florida. At the Florida Panthers ice den, they're doing you know, such an importance of why it's so key to have these guys here where they have their time of their lives. And boy, are we going to have some fun on this stream here tonight? We're here to have a good time. So don't forget, if you got comments, let's hear it. Who are you rooting for tonight? What was your favorite memory during Nationals? Let's have some fun. Well, I'm going to take a quick moment here as they get ready for the National Anthems and do the pregame festivities. I'm going to catch my breath here, get my notes ready, get our rosters ready, and now, hey, if you're watching at home, I hope you got your onesie. I hope you got your dog, your cat, your goldfish, your bird. Bring the whole family. Hey, you let them know it is free to watch all the games on College Hockey South's YouTube. You can like, you can subscribe, you can share the link. Post it on Instagram, share it on Facebook. You know what? Send it by pigeon mail, USPS, whatever works best for you. But let them know it is free to watch right here on College Hockey South YouTube. I'm going to take a quick second break here just to catch my breath. I'm your play-by-play, -play, Nicholas Cruz. Stick around. This is going to be an amazing game.
that will conclude the national anthem. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the CHS white team taking on UNACHL. Well, this has been a game that we're all going to be talking about for a long time because, hey, like I mentioned, the All-Stars are here, and they're ready to rock and roll. And I tell you one thing's for certain. We saw the last game that was an absolute thriller between CHS Gray and the ACC, which was into a 5-4 win by CHS Gray. They came back when they were down. Well, this game is going to have no shortage of some incredible action. In net tonight, it's going to be starting off for CHS. It's Kyle Meyer, number 41. And then for UNYCHL, it's going to be number 33, Josh Lasselli. We see Daly there. Quinzel out there as well for their opposing teams. And the faceoff dot here. Here we go. Pass it back off for Quinzel, who finds his man there on the back end defense. We're going to see how these players start off their game here. Both sides know that every point matters in this tournament. He backtracks, well done, to look for for his man. He tries to clear it up as you know, Griffin. He plays for University of Tampa D1, and he's an incredibly well done player. And icing on the play. And boy, he just lost that foot race by just a hair. But they're going to bring that puck back all the way to CHS's zone for the faceoff. You know, we have so many talented players from all different parts, and we're just so glad they can be here. We got the Vols, we got the Owls, got University of Tampa and beyond. One time shot there had to be stopped away. Goes on the back end of the board, sends it over. It's stopped away by Blevins. Melvin's there, almost had it. Stopped back by Andrews. He sends it over to Valesi. Valesi hanging on to the puck. Good stick handling there. On to the left hand side, Andrews. Goes behind the trap, so goes around to the ground. Had to be stopped back on forward, and the defense can brings it offside. On to Quincell, who now hits the blue line, has to backtrack, get the line change. And overway on the far right-hand side, we're going to be saying his name quite a bit, as these teams are really going to give it everything. God, as Daniel Griffin had to have, hop off the ice here, go for his line change. And once again, here comes the counterattack. Both teams on wearing different colors. Upstate New York wearing their blue tarps and College Hockey South white, well, wearing their white tarps. Broken up play, here comes Caleb Owens. Owens, who plays for the Owls, tries to find one stop and almost made it to the left-hand side. Gets back behind the board. Tries to get it, he gets tripped up, no call there, none needed. A slight touch, but yep, they are gonna call that one. And it looks like it's gonna be a power play for the CHS. So Eben Hart will be taking the penalty for upstate New York, Uni CHL. And if you are a college hockey South fan that's watching this game, get on your feet, make some noise. It's time for a college hockey South power play. As these, as coach lined it up onto the board there to get these teams going. It's so imperative what this means for special teams as they win the face off, but just backtracking it. And here comes upstate New York. UNHL having to find it, shorthanded, beautiful backtrack pass, but broken away. And had to be because that was streaking. Here comes Weir on the left-hand side. He's got a couple men behind him there. He's going to have to play it smart, but well done by Upstate. Right now to really clog that passing lanes. And if you watch closely right now, they got a lot of players stacking up high, really pinching in deep on CHS. Goes on the backside. Oh, and sends it. Had to be stopped away. And Walton, once again, what a great save by Lacelli. Lacelli screen at the moment. Power play unit now on the back end. Trying to go for the back pass. It scrambles to the pocket. Couldn't find it. As Gannon is on that back end side. They can try to find him. Stop. And saved by Lacelli. And UNSUH still is really going to have to give a big pat on the back on their goalkeeper. CHS was just scrambling in front of him like a bunch of angry bees on honey. And boy, he, he had to cover that one up big time. As the face off doubt, now back on you, upstate side. Power play continues, and about a minute remaining left on that side. Trying to get themselves supported. Almost got one past LaSalle, but that just went hot, too high there. Stopped away. Marshall hanging on to the back. Sends it off the pad by LaSalle. 
once again having to make a big stop play with the pads. And they send that one back. Gannon sends it on over to the back man. He finds it all the way to the left. Hits off the boards. They're going to play a little bit of board battle now. Tough play there with 30 seconds remaining on that power play. They've got to get it going. There's Wall. He was trying to pinch in off the board there. Well done right now by Upstate to really cover up those lanes and block them out as much as they can. Getting all the shooting lanes clogged. Opts to pass off the board. Goes back to Wall who sends it on over. On this back end once again it's to Gannon. Gannon now passes it back over. CHS on the top side and that went flying all the way out of play. And we'll have a face off just outside that blue dot. Well, if you're watching this game, this game is brought to you by College Hockey South, YouTube, and by the AAU. We're so glad you guys can join us here. If you're wherever you're tuning in from, give us a shout on the comments. I'll try to read them during our break. In the meantime, Upstate wins that important face off dot as they kill the penalty. Well done from the penalty kill. On the backhand side, one side, the scores! He gets it! Caleb Patillo from Auburn makes it 1-0! In between the legs! My goodness, that five-hole screen! And he just one time slaps it like a circus cannon and absolutely blasts this one behind the back of the net. It is 1-0, CHS White. Well done, by the, well done by the team to get that pinching motion. They really had to screen them as best as they can. And that might just be a recipe for success if CHS White wants to continue to dominate this game here as the goal comes in about four minutes of play. Board battle ensues. First big goal already to start off their tournament from College Hockey South. Griffin now sends it in deep. Had to be grabbed and sent down to the back inside. As Schaefer now has to send it for Schaefer. Big battle there as Briggs is trying to get it. McCarthy was trying to pinch it along with him. Here comes Andrews. He's got Daly on the right hand side. Andrews trying to send it. Couldn't find his man that goes behind the boards and Daly continues to have the puck behind him. He's got Marvin on the backside. Marvin sends it on over. He finds Flaherty sends it. Oh, that one goes to the far right hand side. A little too much on the right. As Andrews sends the back pass, goes beyond the boards. Marvin hanging on. He's got Valesi that was behind him. Valesi gets possession, sends it over. Goes for the one tap over. He finds Daly. Daly's trying to go, but he whiffs it. And that was a close call because that was a tight angle shot. He would have got one off. Beautiful Deke. And another Deke. Floretti trying to send it, but a little too weak on that shot on the wrister there, and Marcelli had no problem just doing a nice low butterfly position save. And trying to penetrate the zone once again, taken back by Andrews. Now as they go for the line chain, Blevins back there, he was skating up a little bit high there. Blevins now with the puck. He's skating all the way down, he's absolutely screeching. Beautiful Deke behind the backside, and nothing to it. As that play was developing nicely is Caleb Owens. Owens, beautiful deke, not one but two. Valesi, trying to get behind his man between the legs and nutmegs him and continues to find the action. All that backhand side, once again, they're playing in the back deep. Frazier sends that puck. It goes all the way back. As Upstate has it cleared. Beautiful breakup play by Gannon. Now Gannon, I've seen him play a few times during Nationals. A very good defenseman as Blevins showing a little bit of strength there, but broken up again by Gannon. We're gonna be saying his name quite a bit. He hits it over by Blevins. Oh, what a bad save that needed to be made. And caresses to the far right-hand side. That's a beautiful blocker save. Once again, action continues. As they make their move, Matias Weir. Weir now has the opportunity to try to get something past him. Marcel just had to keep his eyes locked on that puck. As Marsh was pinching in deep, Matthias Weir gets passed by his man. They go for a line change. Weir stays on the ice. 
goes on the right hand side. And can't really see the numbers there, but it does go back to where who hangs on to the puck. Silky Mitts, but he's blocked off. Well done by Marsh to get him off the puck. Upstate now facing some zone pressure earlier, but they did get some shots off him. So that's going to be perhaps their recipe for success as Myers in net for CHS. Beautiful backdrop pass goes on the left hand side and broken up once again from upstate. Sends it one more time, trying to find his man. They don't. All kinds of zone pressure right now on upstate side. Behind, back door, trying to find him. Good to get it. As Marsh taps in for a slow pass. Oh, that one didn't miss by very much. Almost a giveaway play there. Having to pinch all the way back, he gets it. As Penetrante will have to go there. Marvin, who, who pinched in a little too deep. He's got one man there. Schaffer finds his man. Maybe going for the lane, but broken up. Well done by CHS to try to clear the lane. They do. Try to go that. Try to really hit that, penetrate that red zone, but it was a little bit too strong there. It looks like CHS White is really playing to the lanes, getting those stretch passes in. Beautiful backdrop pass. Finds a man. Almost had him beat but just too much sauce, and Marcel fighting as much as he can. What a save by Marcel! Oh my goodness! Oh man, he had to sit on that one like it was the last chair in musical chairs, and he gets an absolutely gorgeous save for Upstate. Well, But well, we do want to credit the correct goal scorer. It was Keaton Watts from number 33. Keaton Watts got that first goal for CHS White. So well done to Keaton, which was assisted by Daniel Griffin as well on the play. Watts now back on the ice. Here it comes. Upstate sends it. Blocker save once again by Meyer. Well, here's a dad joke for you. I admire the way he made that blocker save. I'll give you, there's a freebie for you. As Campbell chasing it all the way down, they wave off the icing, he won the foot race. Wilson now chasing it back, sends it back to Campbell, but was a little bit too strong. It goes out to, back to Stewart, but just had a slowly play, and as now, CHS will break out on the play. They're gonna get one man off the line change. We try to go for another. Well done on, from CHS to find some of those open lanes, those stretch patching lanes that really, really disrupt the lines of Upstate. They're doing a great job on that play and credit to Upstate. They're playing a very strong game as well, making sure they're, oh, that one's gonna be called for icing, I believe. You have the hands up there. But Upstate New York has done a great job as well of really just making sure if they're going to stretch out those lanes, make sure that their goalkeeper, Marcelli, can see that puck. He's going to have to come out big. He's already let one in, but that's all right. Still plenty of hockey to go here as we approach about the halfway mark here in this first period. Faceoff done inside CHS zone one by Upstate. They had to clear that line on the back end as Stewart there was there to really try to clean that one up. And a puck goes flying and a stick, oh boy. As Andrews gets a stick back and they're gonna have to face off Dot back inside CHS's zone. And to the right hand side of me, Commissioner Kai Neely. Well, it looks like he's mic'd up, so we'll see what he's got to say. Another save there by Meyer. He had to put his blocker pad in there, and he did a good job. All kinds of pressure now from upstate. They get Ebhart from the backside. Good pass to Ebhart. Ebhart sends it. Try to go off the flick from Dystart. Dystart couldn't get it. Meyer having to find it. All kinds of traffic in front of it. And the defense had to clear the lane, and they do just that. Ebhart. Now facing some pressure from the CHS team. They're playing very well now. Brown with it. Finds a lane, almost got to Dysart. 
And that one was almost a tight end. And that was slightly dislodged, but he fixed it. Marcel now facing two players that were, well, one player that was screening him. Goes back to Griffin. Griffin, who had the apple earlier. Well, he's going to look to see if he can continue his production here as he gets a little bit more ice time. As Frazier, he begins to pinch, try to force this upstate team. And they do. Hitting the red line, sends to the blue line and just chips it in. They really want to get the next line in there as Marsh, Scanlon, all great players hopping onto the ice as Caleb Owens. Owens playing off a smooth pass, a beautiful pass from Owens to Frazier. Frazier doing his best that he can. Patriello, he sends it as a board battle was it hit off the board there a little bit awkwardly but they keep possession inside the zone. Oh, and Marcelli just had to get the pad save. I don't know if he noticed that one, but that was a close call by Scallon to Marsh, to Briggs. Beautiful save by Meyer once again. As the clock continues to roll, not too much stoppage in this game here. CHS playing a strong first period as this one goes to Griffin. Griffin. He's got two guys, tried to find the lane, blocked off the skate. As he continues on, they're just gonna send that one around the boards and play it in the backside, take their time, get themselves set up. And here comes a big break if they can get it. Here comes Schaffer, he's got himself open behind him. Beautiful play by Schaffer, but just rolled off the off the shaft of a stick, trying to break that one up, and he does a good job, and by Weir, who had to clear that line, and he did, but the puck stays inside CH's zone. A little bit of puck watching there, as McCarthy sends the puck behind, and is chipped out of play, stays in the zone, but broken up, and that is offside, and offside, oh, a little bit of pushing there. Oh, boy, I guess, uh, yeah, they're shaking his head no there. And yeah, Will Marshall, uh, he's giving him a little bit of a Southern welcome committee a little bit. Face off right off the CHS zone. Won by CHS as they, they've been playing very smooth and a big save by Marcelli once again. Well, he had to swallow up that puck. And the reason being is they're if you look at how CHS is doing right now on that face-off dot, they're playing it smart, they're winning the face-off, but they're getting to their man. And again, like I mentioned earlier, it's just disrupting that line from upstate to get something going as that puck goes sailing above him. As Wald now, he's gonna try to send that puck behind him. A lot of zone time overall in favor of CHS. As it goes on, back to Marshall, back to Walt, sends it, oh, that one just creamed off the side of the, of the post. Hits him off, Marshall once again, playing some great hockey tonight. Oh, they almost collided with each other there, but everyone's okay. Oh, beautiful deep play, once again, had to be stopped by Marcel, once again. Well, Marcel is making some big saves right now for the team, and you, you got to give credit where credit is due. Credit where credit is due because these guys are finding in zones. The, the, the zones right now are really important to see what they are doing to, to really give his ability to get down low and track the puck. It's so important for the goalkeepers. As die start, sends it over. Try to get it over, but Meyer was there, and we're going to get a call here. Um, it looks like the net was dislodged, so. So they're gonna have that face-off dot inside CHS's White's team as Marshall hops on, Wall will stay on, and, oh well, yeah, Wall's a big guy. He is a big guy. Play for FSU. So the Florida Southern team, they had a great run as well in Nationals. They, they're a very strong team. They gotta give credit where all these players are due. They're 
All the college leagues were playing fantastic during Nationals. Wraparound attempt, trying to beat Meyer, but couldn't do it. Marshall once again trying to pinch in, but Allstate now finding a little gravitois and some action there, but the aggression starts back in Penetrante. Well, now beautiful back pass, sends it. Marcel finds a puck that just coughs up in the air like he had the flu. Wilson, oh, he tripped on his own skate. That happened to me two weeks ago when I had my game here. So I can understand that feeling. And Meyer having to squeeze in tight. Is it going to go in the back of net? Sweeped away and cleared from CHS White. And as they stop the play, once again, you know, when we look at both teams here, both teams are doing a good job, but we are finding out that CHS White team is able to penetrate and get those stretch passes. Now, the one thing you gotta like and love about Upstate right now, of course, is just the way they're just able to really frustrate the goalkeeper. They gotta keep doing that. They wanna come back in this game just like they do. You know, it's those greasy goals. That's gonna be a big one in order for them to come back from this one here in this first period as we've got about a few minutes left here, not too much. And thank you to Lynn for the correction of the pronunciation of the name. LaSalle, much appreciated. So apologies to him as well. So we'll make sure we correct that as well. LaSalle. As we mentioned, we're, we're watching all the comments here. And we want to hear from you. What was your favorite memory from Nationals? And you know, if you got a you know, player that's playing on this team, you know, give them a shout out. We'll shout you out on this chat here. We want to share the love on all ends. We got plenty of games, the first of many, during this All-Star Tournament. As they own the back track there, that's as Daly. Valesi as well there. He's going to move forward. Upstate now has to play a strong game. Now Brown hanging on to the puck. Letting his lines move in a little bit forward. They've got Briggs. They've got some... they got Blevins out there who's been really showing some key opportunities for Upstate. And this one is ice. It'll bring this puck all the way back into Upstate zone. The Fishman LLC says his favorite memory, or well, their favorite memory, is all of Natty's. Gotta love it, all the national tournament. It was a lot of fun, crowning some new champions, all kinds of action. It's my first time out there in Philadelphia, having my first Philly cheesesteak, good times out there. That's the face-off dot now inside Upstate Zone after the icing call. Daly sends it! And LaSalle, well, he got down on that butterfly side, and thankfully that the puck didn't get too far. And here comes an opportunity to send it! And Meyer just gobbles it up at 322. Now the face-off on the dot here is going to be inside CHS zone. And still plenty of action to go here. Anything can happen. That's Laherty. Flirty now, beautiful deep back play, tries to send it. Oh, he crashes his goalkeeper and gets swiped as he just charges the goalkeeper. And I'm, I'm sure it was, it, it was an accident. Gave him a little bit of a pat on the back, so to speak, there. And, but everyone's okay, thankfully. That's right, FSC, yep. We got Michael Caden who says go number 19, Will Marshall, and Mike Will number 93 from Florida Southern College. Shout out to you and everyone else that's watching. And during the break, I'll get back to some of those shout outs. We, we want to have fun here. We want to make sure, you know, these are for the kids and they have a good time and have that atmosphere of a festival. You know, the camaraderie amongst these young guys coming here to South Florida and Coral Springs. It's one of those things where it's such a good opportunity for the players as well to 
show their skills and have some fun. Once again, goes all the way back. CHS now off the board, trying to get the pass to Hughes, but couldn't do it. Scanlon now, who has the puck, sends it over. A soft touch pass there. Trying to get past his man, but the defense of CHS clamps it down. Goes back to Marvin. Valesi now, who has the puck, sends it over. Controls it. Tries to send it around, but just couldn't find his man. Once again, all kinds of lane there. Saved by LaSalle, the big one. Well, he tracked that puck like my dog during dinner, waiting for its treat. Eyes were locked in huge, and a big save by LaSalle. Sends it over on that backside. The shot as a faceoff dot was won. As Cowart. Cowart now has to send that puck back. Getting pinched in. Well done by Alstair right now to pinch in deep. They're facing two men that pinch, but cleared away as Weir will have to call it screaming down on that far left hand side. And Schaffer, who had the puck, sends it. Blocked again off away by CHS. They Standing up to their men. Playing tactical here as Gannon, who has the, was trying to pinch in, but here comes upstate. They've got some zone time here. And take it away, and here comes Owens. Owens just screeching down. He's got Weir on the right-hand side to finish it. Oh, what a save by LaSalle. And the puck was dislodged, and my goodness. Split save by LaSalle. Minute 14 remaining, one nothing in favor of CHS White. If you're just tuning in, welcome to the All-Star Game, the second game of the night. As tomorrow we'll have plenty more action for you. Face-off dot one once again. It goes all the way back from the back end, and Coward just loses it. Oh, yeah, Schaffer was really eyeing that puck and almost got the turnover. But taken away, it goes back to Weir. Weir sends it. Oh, that one went just above him, and LaSalle had a look behind him. As that puck just went flying right above him. As Gannon sliding it through. He gets the... Yep, he's going to have to come off the ice here. They want the line change as that puck goes out of play. And this looks like this puck is going to be brought outside of upstate zone here. Oh, and no, actually, no, it looks like they are going to move it to inside the zone after all. Okay. So they'll move that puck to that, well, for us, it's the right hand side, but for technical te technicalities, it's actually the left side of the rink inside upstate zone. Uh, they got to make a line change there. They're going to make two. Face off dot there, and it's one by upstate. Tries to send it, LaSalle just grabs the puck. Flashes the glove and grabs it no problem. As we approach 29.3 seconds remaining. I tell you what, one thing's for sure to that. That is a, an ice technician out there waiting to get that Zamboni ready. Gets off the backhand side, what a save, and he scores! CHS White makes it 2 nothing with 22.6 seconds remaining. Big goal there at the last second. And mentally, you got to feel for LaSalle because he's came out with some absolutely stunning saves. But they just crash in that and just jam it in home. And it's 2 nothing for CHS White. Penetrante, who had to send that puck in, and we'll get you the goal scorer here officially in a moment. He had a little bit of visual blockage at the time, and it's going to be Jacob Penetrante 
assisted by Will Marshall for that second goal. And oh, the goalkeeper went flat down. Patriello, that puck goes above him, and that'll do it for the first period. Well, here is my thoughts here in the second period, and I would love to hear your thoughts, and let's keep it clean, folks. Remember, we are watching. This is for fun. But I'm going to give you my analysis. Oh, wow, before we go, that yeah, that's a broken stick if I've ever seen one. That looked like melted cheese after a sandwich gone wrong. But here's my thoughts. So when we think about these two teams, CHS White, well, they're playing a very strong stretch game pass. They're, they're really connecting with their players, and they're, and they're not afraid to shoot that puck. And we saw that first massive cannon-like shot to hit the five-hole and was able to get past LaSalle. And, and for Upstate, the good side for them is when they do screen, when they were screening Meyer, they were, they were scrambling the Jets, so to speak, right in that blue paint, getting it nasty, getting greasy in there, they were starting to find a little bit of success, and that is so key if you're going to try to come back from this game. Well, we've got 14 minutes here of a break. I'm going to catch my breath. Don't forget, make sure you send your comments here. I'm going to read them. I, I want to talk to all of you. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget, this is a good time to use a restroom. Go grab your snacks, grab your onesie, grab your dog, grab your bird, grab your cat. Tell your friends, everyone you know, all the games are free to watch right here on College Hockey South. In the meantime, I'm going to step away. I'm Nicholas Cruz. It's time for some water.
Welcome back to College Hockey South and Upstate Hockey for the All-Star Game. It is time for round two. I hope you've got your friends and you've got your snacks because we've got plenty of action here for you tonight. And as of course, like I mentioned, we do have some goalkeeper swaps as well. We'll get to that in a moment. Upstate, beautiful stop save by Rocco Bruno. How to make that one a huge one. As Rocco Bruno, who plays for FAU in this very rink, well, not this specific one, but all the way in rink number one, which we'll see, have all the action on that one tomorrow. And to all the fans, you know, I did have a couple of chances to read some of the comments. I appreciate all the, the love and great times and the love we have for your kids out there, no matter where you're watching. We, we appreciate you being here with us tonight for this all-star game. As that puck goes behind the back of the play, once again, it's been a one of those nights where you can you can feel the the the, the, tr the parents that traveled here for these games, the, the the love that they have, and the just the amount of passion, emotion. Oh, that puck went out of play and almost hit. Oh boy, that almost hit him there, but. In the meantime, we do have some of those changes. So for Upstate, so for UDCHL, we're going to swap over to number, oh, did they, wait a minute here. Hold on a second, folks. It looks like they, I guess I made a roster change there because it's supposed to swap out. But the number I see here, so it's going to stay with LaSalle. So it looks like LaSalle will stay in net. According to, well, to our rosters, there was supposed to be a change, but we can confirm. So oh, they're going to restart that one, but we can confirm that the Deli Man, as they call him here in, <laughs> here in South Florida, the Deli Man, Rocco Bruno is in net for College Hockey South and White as they have the face-off dot inside upstate zone, won by CHS. Clarity, who sends that puck, goes and tips in and had to be swallowed up by LaSalle. So Sandra Price, who's watching from South Carolina. Welcome, Sandra. The Fishman LLC could the South win it all or have a strong all-star game like they did in Nationals. Those are great questions. Uh, so to Bill, to answer your question, is LaSalle currently in net? As the faceoff now returns back to upstate zone, LaSalle will stay in net according to what we see here. I'm just going based off what the information we have at the moment. Flaherty who sends that puck, it goes behind the trapezoid. CHS hanging onto that puck behind the trapezoid, trying to find a man, but well done and broken up by upstate. They had to play a, a strong defensive game. And LaSalle made some incredible saves. So we'll see how this continues in the meantime. The Scanlon, who's having to press back a little bit, trying to find some man. They got Andrews now for CHS. That's pushing in forward. Trying to get a little bit of a feel reading of what these players are trying to do and here comes Daly. Daly, he's got Andrews. Try to go for the pass but broken up, well done by Upstate. Off the board, big pass as McCarthy. McCarthy had to chase that one down and it's icing. A very close one but it is indeed icing on CHS so they'll bring the puck all the way back to their zone. Uh, I see someone, and just for the audience and for everyone to know, that is claiming to be me in chat. That is not me. So keep that in mind for those who are watching at home. You don't want to have any issues on these streams. In the meantime, we have Brown now who sends it on over. Upstate now chasing that puck, goes all the way in the backboard. They send it in. 
Pass play he continues on. Nice poke away, but they tried to. We got a little bit of visual block. It's a little bit hard to see here, but we see we saw Owens there pinching back and getting ready for the for the break. Back pass. He he hit the line, but it doesn't go to anybody. And obviously now goes to Watt there, who was playing a strong game and trying to try to set up his man there. And, oh, and that's going to be a tripping penalty. And this one is going to go on Upstate. It's going to be a power play for College Hockey South as Rocco Bruno was just rushing to the bench to get the extra skater, but it was pretty short-lived as they go on to the CHS power play. Face off Don on the back end zone. It's won by Frazier. Goes back to Gannon as the power play unit hops on and they start working it out. But here comes on State. Beautiful to break that one up. Wilson, who had to break that play and does a good job of doing so as Campo was there with him. But taken back by CHS. Here comes Gannon, sends it, goes above him. And Gannon, right place at the right time. He finds Weir. Weir sends it over to Cowart. Cowart. Cowart now with the puck. He's going to try to find any open lane. It tripped again. But no call on that one. He, oh, and another check. And a little bit of pushing going on. And they're going to call this one a touch the high stick. Yeah, they're going to call that one touch with the high stick as number 77, Ben Wiley, will be serving the penalty for Upstate. Minute 22 on the power play for CHS at 1537. Sends it over and that puck didn't get very far as Wall now has to send it back. Goes over to the left hand side. He's got some options. He's got Petrillo who finds him back to Griffin. Griffin slowly but surely finds a one time slapper off the face mask. Oh my goodness. That had some juice behind that one. Goes to the right hand side. Almost found an open lane. My goodness. Goodness. LaSalle with an absolute face mask save. Sends it absolutely Ross Penetrante. Oh my goodness. Well, he had to put his glove up like he had a question for the professor, and my goodness just robs him with 40 seconds remaining on the power play. Face off Don, it's won by Petrillo. Sends it, but hits off a skate. They lost the puck there for a moment. It's Marshall on that backside. He had to play it smooth. Try to go for the one door backstop to Wall, but just couldn't find his man. Wall sends it, stunts once again by LaSalle. So no matter where you're watching, Give us a shout. Who, who's, who, who are you rooting for? If your kid's playing, we'll, we'll try to give you a shout out as well on the next break. As the faceoff dot is won, and the faceoff was won by Upstate. Trying to clear the zone, couldn't do it. As Belvin's there was on the backhand side, it tried to pinch him out, try to get the force out turnover as the penny took penalty winds down, and out he goes, and it's back to 5v5 five 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 hockey. As action here has been intense and LaSalle's been fantastic and another swallow up save by LaSalle. He had to rush out of his blue paint and make that save. And they had a couple of the players from CHS that were just crowding around him. But that is when you know you have a strong goalkeeper where you can just hit off the pad and grab his own rebound as 
They'll do the face off again, right inside upstate zone. As Blevins there, I think they're having some words. It's, oh, it looks like the chin strap of Massaros was loose. So he, he, he oh, he's, oh yeah, he's gonna kick him out of the ice there. And you gotta get your equipment fixed. You know, safety is, is huge and important for these players. And we want, you know, this is a lot of fun and we wanna make sure that you know, the players are safe. Looks like he's having a little bit of a equipment issue and the chin strap was too loose. So Caleb Owens had to come in and take the spot. Sends it, goes above him. It's Blevins there now it's watching him as Watts finds it back and that one once again goes a little bit too far on the left hand side. Wiley on that backhand. He's there watching his teammate looking for that puck. He finds it, goes behind his skate. A little bit lost control there, but they do clear the zone. Flaherty there now who has the puck will skate it in front. Nice stick handling. Doing a good job of getting off his man, but it was a little too strong. If he would have been offside, his team is still offside. He's going to have to lightly touch it, and that goes to Marshall, or Marvin, excuse me, as that goes back. And they're just skating backwards. Now good pinch here from upstate right now. Starting to get a little bit higher now, standing up to their men on that that red line. And it was taken away as Massaro's fixed his chin strap and Watts now in the back, but it's well done by Upstate to clear it. Hughes behind him and he re receives the puck on the back end. Try to get that delivery and just can not find his order. They slide it over. Too much action there. They try to get to the board battle. Here comes CHS with the puck on the back end. Now back to the front of the, of the offensive zone. Sends it, taps it over. Massaro's there who had a little bit of equipment issues back on the ice and starts with the board battle. His cow work there and just an easy pickup there from LaSalle. 12 away here the second period. It's 2 nothing in favor of CHS White if you're just joining us a little bit late here this evening. Coming to you from Cold Springs, Florida. The Florida Panthers ice den. A wonderful staff here that they have been very accommodating to help us. As they continue to back play there. We've got, we've seen these players and what they can do and no doubt in my mind that plays like this where Brown now is sending in deep, he's playing in high, finds his man, Rocco Bruno had to make a save and my goodness, a huge opportunity for Upstate and they almost had it, sends it off the face. That's the second time we've seen a puck hit someone in the face and they get a rebound. All kinds of action there, and Rocco was getting a little bit flustered on that back end, but stole it away. Here comes CHS. Beautiful one to pass. Oh, my goodness. Trying to shove it in, but couldn't. They were digging deep. Action continues. Zone time for CHS. Tries to send it open slot, and he did not find as Andrews. Rushes to try to find the puck. Back to Gannon to Andrews. And we're gonna get a whistle there. It looks like it, well that was a little bit with the stop play. They get themselves restarted here. As Craig Carlton says, daily. Let's go daily. Face off now inside. Upstate zone, they win that one as Brown takes the puck. He's got a couple of guys he can look for to get this puck to us. They hit the red line, past the blue, but a little too strong out the shaft of the stick, but he regains it, recovers, opportunity, all kinds of light, scores! Upstate gets the first one of their night, and it's 2-1 at 10-36. Sensational play on that breakout play. Just CHS just couldn't, the defense just turned it over. 
big error and just slides it on home. And it's 2-1. And we got ourselves a hockey game. Now, I will be honest, I had a little bit of visual block, so I'm going to credit the goal scorer. Don't worry. We'll pull it off here as soon as it updates on my end, but we will get them. Don't worry. But what a great play to get themselves back in it. It's 2-1. There's a goal was scored by number seven, Mitchell Marsh, assisted by number 13, Logan Scanlon, and number eight, Robert Dysart. Well done from upstate to get themselves back in it. They got one pass by the Delhi man. AKA. Petrillo, who sends the puck in, just goes for the chip play. You know, we see, and here comes Upstate once again, trying to find their man to try to get another one past Rocco Bruno. Ball done to be broken up by Wall. Wall now with all kinds of lanes stopped away by LaSalle. And a great pad save from his legs as Wall touches this one in. Wall's got Marshall, tries to send it in, almost went to his stick. Panetrante now pinching, Marshall. Beautiful deep play, finds his man. One time they try to go for the one time door stopper. But he had, LaSalle had his ring camera on and just saw that all the way. Flaherty with the puck off the back of his own teammate. All kinds of pressure now from CHS. Trying to respond. After Upstate scored, oh, a little bit tripping. That's going to be a tripping penalty. Oh, and a late shot there. I don't think that was intentional, but it's going to be a tripping penalty on CHS. So if you're an Upstate fan, get on your feet, make some noise. It's time for an Upstate power play. As number 93, Wall, will be serving the penalty for CHS. Two minutes for a tripping. <laughs> Big opportunity here for Upstate to try to tie this game up as they get themselves on the power play. Let's see if special teams will be a thing they're going to look forward to. Scanlon is going to get back in there. It goes to Brown. Brown now, he finds his man. Soft tech play, almost out, almost go, almost went offside, but just kept it in by a hair. He gets body checked, and there is body checking allowed in this tournament, by the way. But, uh, you know, I, I respect the players are not checking too hard. I, I respect that. They, they want to be respectful to each other. We love to see the fair play there of the respect. As they send the puck all the way down, LaSalle, who stays on net for the second period. Brown had to tip it on over as Hughes, facing a little bit of trouble there. Brown now regains possession, back from Hughes. Brown just streaking down and humming absolutely down that red line, going coast to coast, tried to find one man, and Rocco Bruno with an absolute sensational save. You know, here in South Florida, not too far from here, it's the butterfly world. And I tell you what, he needs to have his own, his own exhibit there, because that was a gorgeous butterfly save there from Rocco Bruno. As Die Start will be taking the face off inside CHS's zone. They're still on the power play for 55 seconds. Face-off is crucial here. Can they win it? They do. Pass it over on the back end. Trying to play a chip and play there, and it's broken away, and a big error there. And here comes Watts there. Watts tried to find the man. He had a guy that was streaking, but well defended by Upstate. They're going to take their time and just let them, let them get themselves controlled. They don't want to go too crazy. They, they want to get them, their guys set up as Blevins now just 
racing through. He makes it into the entry zone. He's got some options as his puck almost was given away off the board. A little stick handling there, waiting for their man, waiting for the guys to get set up. They got to get those skates moving. Sends it. Glove saved by Bruno. When we think about these goalkeepers and how much they contribute to their team, and it's just unreal the amount of training to be a goalkeeper is. The flexibility, the, the being able to track the puck down, it's, it's incredible their routine is. Very unique players and a lot of respect to goalkeepers and the way they play their game. And I'll say now having their, one of the guys was trying to screen Bruno, but taken away, here comes the break. Finds his man, can he finish it? Off the backhand pass, could it co connect? Still danger inside upstate zone. All kinds of scrambling, try to go for the back door again. This one goes to Marshall, he just sends it on and swallowed up by LaSalle. No problem. So as we approach 6-17 here in the second period, how are you guys doing that are watching the game? Your thoughts so far as we get near the end of the second period, who are you cheering on? And if, you know, the question of the day, what was your favorite Nationals moment? Patillo, big save by LaSalle again. Had to get that low blocker pad saved there. Did a good job, got the rebound. That's what they're trying to look for. On that back end, sends it over once again. They try to go for a stick. There were a couple that were there. Once again, Wilson on the back end. They got a, CHS has got a lot of their players that are offside. As was touched, Daly now pinching. Daly, body check there, gains possession. Almost hit off, but deflected by a stick. Hughes all the way down. The puck goes behind the trapezoid, finds his man there, and but it's stolen away by CHS, and here they come. They've got a couple of guys there, but too much fancy work there, but somehow finds Andrews. And CHS, they're making it happen. As Laherty sends it over. All the way back. Still hanging on to that puck. Back to Marvin. Marvin now who hangs the puck, finds his man. All kinds of zone time here. Big save by LaSalle. And here comes Marvin again. And he's offside. Frazier was just there on the offside. I don't know how LaSalle has all that energy, but if I had to give him a nickname, it would be Duracell LaSalle because he just keeps on going and going and going and going and never stopping. He's just got all kinds of energy as a goalkeeper. He's been absolutely fabulous tonight. As Greg Stair had to take the puck for upset as the Faceoff was just outside the neutral zone. Evan Hart there on that back end. He's got Scanlon. Scanlon was there. Passing it back. Hits the trapezoid on the back end. They've got Brown. Brown now with the puck. Good stick handling. Trying to hang on to it. It's stopped. Saved by Bruno. Well, Bruno's just sees that puck from a mile away and just scoops it up, flashes the glove and in it goes. He's got a, the deli man's got a warm biscuit in the basket, as they say here. Here comes Briggs now on the face off, but it's won by Frazier for CHS. Oh, a little bit of pushing as the glove comes off. Body check really late there. Remember, you can body check, big save there. One time. Oh my goodness, I go in. LaSalle with everything he's got, he's pushed off. An unbelievable save by LaSalle. Oh my goodness. 
Oh man, that's got to be the save of the tournament already. LaSalle, I've heard of Snow Angels before and that was one of them. Literally LaSalle just spreading out his body like Laffy Taffy and almost crossed the line, but LaSalle wasn't not having any of that. While they get that sorted out, I want to give a big shout out to my good friend Dan Dallin, the Dallin Wrench, who is one of the broadcasters from Nationals, as the faceoff is in upstate New York zone. Getting their body low, they're fixing each other. Keeping their six low. Oh, that was a little bit of fake from the ref there. They win that one as CHS continues to dig a little bit. Weir sends it. Beautiful save by LaSalle again. Oh, my. Duracell LaSalle just keeps on going and going. As the faceoff dot now inside again, upstate zone. It stays there. So we've been having some zone time here inside upstate zone as Briggs will backtrack going for the line change or seems to be circling back around. He believed he was going for a change, but he doesn't. They keep that one in and see Chess will not play so well in getting their man connected there. Uh, giveaway there almost from upstate and Owens who's just battling. Well done by upstate now. Adding all kinds of pressure. Almost had him. Here comes a break off play. Flaherty back to Weir. Weir, beautiful deep, beautiful back pass play, but just couldn't get it to Owen to finish it. As Upstate now clear their zone, hits the red line. He is a big man, Briggs. He's got another man to the right. Sends it, saved by Bruno. Action continues. Sends it off of Bruno again. That was a wicked Wista that just went straight to him. He had to be really tight on his play there. Marshall and Marvin tie up. Back to Wool. Big player. Another save by LaSalle at 235. to get some music going here as they face off. Dot is inside upstate zone. They play it on that back end and Brown now who's had some time playing here. Giving away to Penitente. Back pass reach over from Marshall. That was, that was, an, that was a beauty to watch. As Marshall once again Quick feet movement, try to get past one man, goes for a, a pass to Wool, who finds it, but a little too strong as Bruno now has to come out of the net. They're just gonna slow it down for Cowart. It's Cowart, excuse me. Cowart there was behind him. Try to go back to Wool, and Wool's a big player. And for a big player, he's got some speed, but here comes Oxate. Try to screen him, and there was Hughes, but Bruno just sliding across his net on that blue side, and Wool sends it, finds Marshall. Can he finish it? What a save by LaSalle. LaSalle is really playing lights out tonight. Typically, I don't give out stars of the games or anything, but he's probably got to definitely be like a first star at this point. He's just been sensational for Upstate right now. Just incredible to watch. It's Kawart there. He's got Masaros. Masaros there on the back end. He gets to him as he gets body checked. Puck's still in play, and see a hand go up, and it looks like we're going to get a slashing call. Yep, it's going to be a slashing call, and let's see who it's going to be on. It's going to be... It's going to be on Massaro. So, well, Upstate has an opportunity. It's a penalty on Massaro's two minutes for slashing. And it's time for an Upstate power play. 
So if you're an upstate fan watching from home, get on your feet, make some noise. Let's have some fun and let's see how special teams can work for upstate to get themselves tied with a minute 20 here. Can they pull it off? Special teams so crucial. Face off Don and it's almost one. It's just very close as they chip out the zone. Brown now racing over. Just keeping an eye on to see how they're gonna do this. I see Scanlon as well, Briggs, they're all on the ice. Top line, Brown just gonna ring it around. Try to send it to Scanlon, but broken away and chipped down. So far, a strong penalty kill with less than a minute to go. Brown back to Scanlon. Scanlon just gonna slow it down, back to Brown. The puck is a little bit bouncing at the moment. But it done well so far to try to keep it in and they send that puck flying deep down and doing a good job of killing it from CHS. Here it comes upstate, they chip in, they hit the red line, they get to the blue. Sends to Briggs who has got the board battle, trying to wait for his team to set up and they do. Fakes the one time, gets it on the other side, almost found him. Upstate trying to get the guys organized and not let this puck get land with five seconds remaining. Can they get one shot off? All kinds of traffic and that'll do it for the second period. Well, folks, if you're watching from home, you are watching an absolutely brilliant game from LaSalle tonight. My goodness, he's been making all kinds of acrobatic saves, split saves, you name it. So here comes my breakdown of the second period. Well, Upstate were able to get one on the board and they needed that one, especially as they head into the third period with an abbreviated power play of about 40 seconds. Special teams really needs to get clicking for them to see if they can get themselves tied in the second period. Meanwhile, CHS, this time around, they're facing a little bit more pressure from Upstate and that's good news for Upstate to let them try to cook inside CHS's zone, but they gotta be careful of those turnovers, and we'll see how they do in the third period. In the meantime, I'm gonna go over some of the, the names out here, you know, they've been calling out, and, you know, we gotta, we gotta say that, you know, we got some, some of the people there that are just watching the game, you know, thank you from wherever you're watching. You know, saying, people saying, let's go Ryan up, let's go daily. You know, Ethan saying, you know, Zach Briggs is his roommate. A lot of love from all over, and we love that you're here. Don't forget, this game is brought to you by College Hockey South on YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe. We'll be streaming our games tomorrow and Sunday. And make sure you're following us on Instagram. Make sure you're following AAU on Instagram, College Hockey South on Instagram, Upstate New York on Instagram. Follow everybody. Get on the behind the scenes and so much more that you can watch from there. In the meantime, We'll be back here in about 14 minutes. Shoot out your comments. Let's see what you got to say. Who do you think is going to take in the third period? Call your shots. In the meantime, I'm Nicholas Cruz. We'll be back after a short break. Stick around.
Well, welcome back to what will be a very tight third period. And as we begin the action, we saw Rocco Bruno. He had the second period, but he's going to swap off now and give the other goalkeeper a chance now to hop in and play as they start off here. And so it's going to go to Andrew Shearson. I've seen Andrew Shearson during the during nationals and he's just incredible of what he can do he, he can make some big time saves LaSalle will stay in net as well and if you're just tuning in it's going to be an abbreviated power play a very short one in favor of upstate and a good chance for them to try to come here and get one back here in the third period to tie this game up and here we go. Third period action. This is what we came for. This is the moment. Everything on the line for this third period. It's all down to this. Can Upstate find a way to try to tie this game up? It's all or nothing for the All-Stars. As this puck goes into the backhand side, it hits the trapezoid. And, you know, again, like I mentioned, you know, the, one of the things here is, Get those legs moving, get themselves set up. They've got about less than 10 seconds to get themselves going as that puck is cleared away by CHS. And off and in he goes as Massaros finishes slashing. So it'll be Shearson versus LaSalle here in this third period. As we continue on there, LaSalle making another big pad save to keep them alive. One minute in and we've already seen CHS just really aggressive start to this play and Shearson having to come out huge. And one of the things I noticed here before this third period started is the ice is really cut up at the moment as they send it and it goes beyond LaSalle. And now Marvin sends the puck off the back and Nassaros who now has Marvin on that back end and Patilio, he had to play it back there as Daly finds his man, Valesi, who's been great and Daniel Griffin who's also had an assist tonight. And CHS is just gonna have to backtrack this one, take their time to try to get themselves going as Shearson in the net for CHS. LaSalle, who's just been unbelievable tonight for Upstate. Comes another opportunity to try to get themselves open and get the fence here from Upstate, clogging up those shooting lanes. Sticking man to man, but they still have possession as CHS will send that one flying. Action continues, the board battle ensues. CHS emerges with the puck and clears it out. They've got the man there, Petrillo sends it. Oh, that had some, that had some juice to that one there and it just goes behind LaSalle. Back to Griffin. Trying to chip in, trying to shake off a couple of defenders. Good stick handling. Sends it above, trying to chip it, but the cheeky play doesn't really connect and gives Upstate a chance to get a line change as they send it to Andrew Shearson. Shearson just calmly makes a save and here comes Daly with all kinds of speed but whiffed on the puck and almost went crashing on the ice. Thankfully he has got a good balance there as, as Marsh finds Briggs but hits off the skate, sends it over. Shearson having to make a big pad save there as Owens. So now we see the Owens Weir line starting to form and something interesting there from CHS. On that back end, stopped away. Oh, uh, almost was a hook, almost. Here comes Weir. He's got Owens behind him. Weir playing that play. He's got a man, sends it, tries it, scores! Frazier! with the beautiful where to Owens to Frazier and taps it in home to make it 3-1 for CHS. Well, 
The Vols know how good Frazier is. He played strong in regionals. And Frazier just absolutely just simple tap in, but uh, it all started with Weir and, and Caleb Owens. They were backtracking, and Owens found that lane and sent it to Weir. Then Weir back to Owens, and Owens to Frazier to make a 3-1 at 16-16 in the third period. Looks like they're waiting for the puck drop, and they set it here in the center ice. And, all, and, you know, all credit to LaSalle. I mean, there was not much he can do. I mean, it was just a well-done tic-tac-toe play. And we talk about those greasy goals, just being at the right place at the right time, just finding your finding your man. Just if you got to get, get in there in that blue paint, you do. And here comes an opportunity. Just whiffed it. And upstate, they're going to think about that one there. And that was a lot of... A lot of power that was going to the shot, but just unfortunately just whiffed it. As Schaffer now just sends it in. And stopped by Shearson. Well, 15-24 here in this period, and it, it, there's, if you look at the score, you're seeing 3-1, and you're thinking to yourself, well, how do we get here? And, that there's so much to unpack because it's just the style of CHS is just the long passes are they're able to connect, but Upstate's been doing good and making sure you know they let you know LaSalle see the pucks when they need it. Here comes Marshall. Open lane off the post. The goalkeeper's best friend rings the Liberty Bell and sends that puck to freedom. Continue to stop there, and LaSalle had to make the save. Penetrante now sends it over, almost behind the back of the post and just couldn't get it. Marvin now back to Wool. Continuous action, zone pressure now. Here he comes for the one time, can he find it? Away oh, too strong. Duracell LaSalle just making some acrobatic key saves and just playing Incredible. As the puck goes behind the play of CHS, Briggs out. He's trying to get his team going here. Can he do it? He's got the talent for it. Sends it over to Brown. Brown out as the puck just slides a little too strong. Wilson now chasing it. As Shearson watches the puck go behind his trapezoid. Small play there, it gets over and he finds Masaros. Oh, just whiffed it on it, tried to get it in. LaSalle once again, having to make another save. Man, I tell you what, if he, if, if LaSalle was a, was a bank, I would be going there because he's making all kinds of saves right now. Just absolutely incredible tonight. <laughs> Continuous action, and now that we resume play as that faceoff was won by Upstate, but here comes Griffin. And another stop save by LaSalle. He had to get that one, and this one hits off the back skate from Upstate in there. A little strong, and that will be icing on Upstate. As Ava Kessler says, go Ryan. Not sure who Ryan is or which specific Ryan, but shout out to you, Ava. Thank you for tuning in. As Watts will be taking the face off here inside the zone of Upstate. Touch away by Patriello. Stop saved again by LaSalle. Another save by LaSalle. Off the pad again. He is just playing to his hash marks and keys in that blue paint so well right now. 
Massaro's on my back end. Finds one man, but trying to go off the boards there, and it's a little too strong. CHS just absolutely trying to get themselves dominant in here inside the zone, and now they're starting to pick up a little bit of zone time. Body check, cleaned away, almost a stop save. Massaro's it's still loose. All kinds of traffic, and my goodness, LaSalle once again. Oh my goodness, LaSalle making all kinds of saves tonight and had to sit down like my grandfather after a walk at the park. Oh my. As continuous action begins, 12-28 here in the third. 3-1 in favor of CHS. Upstate getting pinched in hard. Here comes Zaley. The speed on this kid's unreal. Daly now sends it almost one top shelf. But he can find it. Sends it to Gannon. Slides it over. Tried to find Daly, but was too strong. And this one may be... No, no icing. They waved it off. So no icing there. Might have hit the boards just a bit enough to win it. Sends it over to Gannon, but Gannon was stopped by Scanlon. Scanlon with the puck. And now it just seems like CHS is just trying to clamp down tactically of letting any type of zone pressure. And that was a simple stop save there from Shearson. But I'm noticing now the tactics here from CHS is now a little bit different compared to what I saw last period. Now it looks like they just want to control, just they've got the 3-1 lead, just hang on to it, just play a little bit more controlled hockey, not let Upstate have too many opportunities. As Owens and Weir play back to Frazier. Frazier sent that one, hits off the back. Trying to go for the wraparound. Oh my goodness, LaSalle again. He wrapped it around like a Christmas gift, but he forgot the bow and LaSalle just absolutely takes him away from that one. What a gorgeous save again. The batteries on this kid for Duracell LaSalle is just unreal tonight. As the faceoff was won by Frazier to Weir. Weir to Flaherty, trying to send it over. And this shot just was a little bit too strong on the right-hand side. As Frazier sends it on the back end. Caleb Owens off the board, finds Weir. Weir sends it, not too far off to the right-hand side. Goes to Marvin. On that back end, gets chipped up a little bit, but he's okay. Gets up, no problem. We continue. As we approach about almost halfway of this third and final frame, Weir back to Frazier to Weir. Owens trying to find him, gets a little bit of cross check, was a little too high, and it's going to be a penalty on Upstate, and that one might be for slashing. So it's going to be a penalty on Upstate, so it's gonna be a CHS power play. So if you're a CHS fan watching tonight, get on your feet, make some noise as number 17 from Upstate, Owen Hughes will have to serve the penalty for two minutes and the power play for CHS, they're gonna put on their hard hats and get to work. Marvin now starting this off as it was a face off one, Sends it. Oh, that one hits the glass. Oh, nice body check there. Try to keep it in play. Goes to Marvin. Trying to screen LaSalle. Finds it. LaSalle with an incredible save again. Marvin sends it around. Finds Wool. A little bit of pressure now from the defense. But kept in. Strong power play. And a huge opportunity. Upstate, if he can get it. Just stopped him at the last second. Continuous, and Shearson 
is going to keep it rolling. Shearson thought he was going to stop it, but decides to keep it rolling. And here comes Wool. The 1v0 scores! It's Wool on the power play! Oh, that's exactly what you want. Again, when I mentioned throughout this entire game, the stretch pass and Wool beautifully on the stick just slams it above him. Top shelf where Mrs. Cruz keeps the peanut butter. I'm not sure what his nickname is, but if I had to give him one, it would be the Wally Mammoth. He's strong, he's tough, and came in there with all kinds of confidence and makes it 4-1 for CHS. And that one's offside on Upstate. And it, you know, this play and that goal really started when we thought that for a moment Upstate was gonna be able to get that shorty, but Shearson kind of kept it going. They didn't blow the whistle because he kept it alive and Wall just started screeching down the neutral zone and just gorgeous stick pass and all he had to do was just slam it top shelf above him and we get that power play goal from CHS. Another save again as it goes off that back end side and, and I have to agree with you, the Fishman LLC, you know, it is amazing because keep in mind, this is the first time these kids are playing with each other here in, in this game and and they're just clicking so well. A lot of good, strong chemistry from these teams. As Upstate gains possession, broken up play, and as CHS now is just trying to get themselves dominated, and we're gonna get a play here, and hooking is gonna be the call, and I think this is gonna go on Massaros as he heads to the penalty box, yep. Well, it's an Upstate power play, so if you're an Upstate fan, get ready, make some noise. It's time for an Upstate power play. 4-1, can they get one here to get themselves back in this game? It's 8.55, there's still a bit of hockey left. You can never count any team out here. As Upstate begins their power play. On that left, sends it, stopped saved by Shearson. Just flashed a glove like a like a flashlight in the dark. Just saw it all the way and clean save by Shearson. Now as they have the face off now is still inside CHS zone. What can can the upstate get their hard hats on, get themselves on the power play? Still plenty of hockey left. Tips on on over. Knopf now is on that back end to Brown. Brown taking his time, trying to look for a lane. As Shearson is, is now, was for a moment, he was screened. Just got to send it over to that back end, and that one clears out, and just couldn't keep it out as that puck clears the zone. Brown with the puck now, just slowing it down. He's got to wait for his team to get reorganized before they go for the rush. And here they come. Brown back on the other side. He finds Briggs as that one goes over and they will have to send this one back. The penalty kill right now from CHS has been solid for the first minute. And so they continue on now. They try to go for the rush. It does, beautifully done by Hughes who hit off a skate, kept the control. He finds Brown. Brown sends it. What a stop by Jensen scores! Scanlon gets one, and it's 2-4. There is no quick in upstate New York right now. And a big goal from Scanlon. A big, big goal at 7.43 remaining. It's 2-4. And my goodness, he just played it to his man, and he found it and just rips it past Shearson. 
This game isn't over yet, folks. Kawert now, who goes on that back end. Let's see, it looks like this power play might have given, oh, a big body check there on Blevins and from Frazier. Almost sent him over the boards as LaSalle had to make the save. Kawart now pinching in. Another stop play, almost had for the third, but couldn't finish it. Weir to Owens. Kawart now just pinching in back. He's got Gannon there with Gannon who slides the puck as, as Weir chases it. Looking for his line partner, I believe, that's starting to develop between Weir and, and Owens. I'm seeing them a lot together now. Seeing a little bit of a pattern here. As Die Start sends it over. Almost had him! That was a close call for your CHS fan because he had him beat. And that one is going to be called for offside. Just a little bit too excited there, but at 6.35. It's 4-2. Still time left. As Wall on the faceoff, it's one by Wall, but taken right back by Upstate. They've been, they've been trying to get themselves back here. That power play goal definitely gave them a little bit of that juice that they were looking for. As Wall chases it down, goes to Marshall. He finds his man, tries to finish, scores! And Wally Mammoth does it again! On oh, a beautiful back pass play, Wall finishes it. And it's 5-2 to two at 6-12. While that bench on my right hand side for CHS just jumped and celebrating, but on my left hand side for Upstate, it's a little bit more quieter. And you know, they've really fought hard here. I give credit where credit is due. And LaSalle has just been incredible tonight. And I, and it's, I don't want the score to be a factor to look back. and. Because the, the, the amount of acrobatic saves LaSalle had tonight has just been unreal. But here comes Wall. He had one. I believe he's on the hat trick watch. And tunings now. Wall, who seems to be, now I'm starting to notice he himself is starting to be garnering himself some extra minutes. Breaking up once again. Trying to finish, but just couldn't it. Score! What a play and finish by Jacob Penetrante. And it looks like LaSalle is just getting finished right here as Jacob just gives a salute to the bench. But it was just all kinds of pressure from CHS. As I mentioned, Wall was just getting all that time. They just frustrated them in their own zone, and bang goes a dynamite. It's 6 2 at 5 22. Five minutes remaining here in the third and final frame. It doesn't look like CHS by any means necessary. He's looking to, to take things slow. They want to keep it going. Oh, they had to be. Sticked away by LaSalle. Board battle. As Griffin just hangs on to it. Hits off a player from upstate and try to clear the zone. And Wilson would almost had a gorgeous breakaway. And here it comes. Try to find his man, but stopped away by Griffin. Griffin just charging down. He finds his man to the right. Back over again. LaSalle had to reach over and it hits out of the zone. Watts 
onto his right hand. As the defense of Upstate now just working extra hard to get this offense going, and they do. Hughes has got a lane open. If he can find his man, try to, but onto the shot instead. Didn't get too far from him. As Massaro starts chasing down. The clock starting to wind down here in this first game of the tournament here for both these conferences. Sends it over in Shearson. Easy glove save. Well, a 3.38, third period, 6-2. to two. I, I am curious to see if they'll pull the keeper at some point to try to see if maybe they can spark something here last minute. But it's going to have to take everything they got from upstate. And they get a call here. Oh, yeah, frustration starting to show from upstate. And... And it's gonna, it looks like it's gonna be a penalty for tripping. Yep, it will. So it's gonna be a power play for CHS for tripping from number seven. So that's gonna be, yeah, Mitchell Marsh. He's going in the box now and not, not, a, not a moment you want to cause a penalty for your team, but at 329, he gets it. As the power play unit for CHS will get their hard hats on and see what they can do here. Face off dot and it's won by CHS. Kawart, he finds Daly, try to finish it, couldn't as Andrews was there. One time trying to save it, LaSalle, what the sprawling front save. Oh my goodness. He had to make a jumping front save there to cover it up. On that back end, they see that their defense has faced a lot of pressure. And as the tournament goes on, uh, I am curious to see what Upstate's plans are for the next game to see what they want to work on in terms of, oh, and that one almost scrambled by by LaSalle, but you know, for Upstate, I, I am curious to see what the coaches will do for the next game to try to get their team clicking. And maybe they'll see what they like. Maybe they might give LaSalle the next game off to rest, perhaps, we'll see. Face off here and it's won by Upstate. The Schaffer was there. McCarthy now who clears the line. About a minute remaining left on this power play. Marvin with the puck. He's hanging on to it. Makes the pass. On that back end he finds Daly back to Marvin. Strong pass there from Marvin. And really sensational save. Face off outside the neutral zone as goes on the back. Defenseman of Flaherty who Weir finds Marvin. Marvin with the puck, he's just stick handling it, playing it off softly. He sends it to Flaherty, Flaherty who just loses it. And here comes an opportunity for Upstate. Can they get on the shorty? With a few seconds remaining, well done by Marvin to clean that one up. As we resume to the 5v5 with a minute 30 remaining. Entering the zone. CHS have been 
They played a strong game as Griffin now hops on. That puck just fluttered a little bit. As Stewart there was trying to send it on out to Shearson, but a simple save for him with one minute remaining here in the third period. As they continue to battle, Weir trying to grab the puck out of the air, but couldn't. Weir skating a little bit slow, sends it. Close save by Shearson with 45.7. It's 6-2. As Weir and Owens are having some conversation here on this ball. As Marshall will hop on, Wall will hop on. I can see from my right-hand side and No matter what the outcome is here, you know, these players know that this is for, for some bagging rights and a big stop by Shearson, but to finish my thought, you know, they come in here, you know, there's a good chance, get some nice extra ice time, show their skills, show why they hang with the best. That's why they're selected for this. And they, they've done a great job on both ends to play their game. And, and it looks like we're going to get a timeout call. Uh, there, someone's being motioned over, over on this right-hand side. But they'll take the timeout with 41.5. It's six to two. And on my right-hand side, a lot of chatter. On my left-hand side, it's a little bit quieter, but they are talking about it. You see Briggs out here, Marsh, Hughes. They're all talking. Eberhardt as well, discussing how they want to run about this play. And as we get ready to wrap up this third period, what's your thoughts on the match? What did you like? What surprised you from both ends? So who for you was surprising? What did you like so far from day one of this tournament, the all-star tournament? And don't forget, we'll be back here tomorrow morning as well. You can catch the game here on College Hockey South. Oh, try to go for the empty netter, but it will be iced on CHS. we will have to bring that puck back and no line change. As it looks like, I was right, they're gonna pull their keeper, try to get themselves another goal. And now goals matter in this tournament. 28.9 remaining. S skate save there. Shearson jumped up high. And here comes Wall. He's got the empty net for the hat trick. He's got it. Wall, chef kiss to the sky, and he gets his third of the night. What a game by Wall. And it's 7 2. The players on the right-hand side of me, they're not throwing hats, but they're throwing gloves at them. That's a new tradition I've never seen before, but uh, hey, they don't want to lose their buckets. But it's a hat trick for Wool, or as I like to call him, the Wooly Mammoth. Played absolutely strong tonight. Scanlon now trying to get one last push here with less than 10 seconds remaining. Here comes Wool. Will he get one more for the fourth? Almost. Puck hits out, and that will do it for the end of the first game for Upstate and for CHS White. The final score here is 7-2, and as I've been saying all night, LaSalle has been unreal, but CHS played their tact tactics right. They played strong. They clicked. They frustrated their, def the, the, uh, their opposing defense. There's still plenty of hockey left these next couple of days. And hey, folks, don't forget, you can catch all the action, College Hockey South. So let me pull out the times here for you because it is morning games here. We return on the ice at 8 a.m. CHS versus New England, their, their conference, New England conference, at 8 a.m. tomorrow followed by the 10.58 a.m. game, which will not be a CHS game, it'll be ACC and 
Upstate, then 355 will be CHS White versus Empire. Then for that last game of the evening will be New England versus New England's side with ACC at 6.40 p.m. A great game all around, and to everyone that was watching, thank you for the kind compliments and you know, supporting the players. No matter where you are, I wish you a wonderful evening. As like my good friend Dan Dalen says, don't make it just a good day, make it a great day. Have a great night. I'm your play-by-play, -play, Nicholas Cruz. It's been an honor. We'll see you tomorrow morning. In the meantime, get some rest. And don't forget to follow 